might not think much about the health of your gut, but it can affect so many areas of your life. So with two views on the topic, we have medical doctor, Dr. Elaine Chin, and natural <laughs> doctor, Elizabeth Goldstein. Thank you so much for joining me. It is such a buzzword, mm -hmm. gut health. We're hearing it so much now. So what is it and why is it important for me to know about gut health? Okay, so I'm a traditional medical doctor, so I'm gonna start with those basic questions. Okay. Okay, so are you constipated? No, doc. Do you have diarrhea? <laughs> I have no diarrhea. Do you burp and have gas and bloating? Well, I burp sometimes, but I try <laughs> not to do it on the show. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, you're fine. Okay. All right? I'm okay. Now, Here's the but, because she's educating me. Yeah. There is actually more to it, because now we know to ask a different question that you may not be able to answer right away is that, do you have a diversity of gut flora? And oh, you go, I don't know. yes, that's the question. Because it's really important now that we are, as a traditional medical community, getting this really important research to show that it's actually implicated in colitis, heart disease, mood disorders, including depression. Really? And even your ability to lose weight or gain weight. Really? So that's the most important thing for the audience probably. But um, so in this big long gut of ours, five feet or 1.5 meters of it, uh, there's a hundred million times more biome gut bacteria than there are all the stars in our universe. Oh. So we're getting into the study of why your gut health helps. And I don't think people realize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything that's going on in there. There's a lot happening. To me, the big thing that you said is depression. Mm -hmm. Like to know that there's stuff happening in your gut that could affect your brain that way um, is yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, so Elizabeth, the average person has about three pounds of gut bacteria? Exactly, yeah. So three pounds of gut bacteria. There's trillions of them, though they're microscopic. Yeah. And they influence all different types of things. So they actually activate certain genes help absorb certain nutrients, yeah. synthesize vitamins, and you mentioned depression. Yeah. They actually impact your mood because in your gut, 80% of your serotonin or your feel-good hormone is made there. And these microbes actually help produce serotonin. Okay. Pretty fascinating. So it's not just your brain, it's your gut. It's like this enteric gut-brain connection, connection that we've recently learned about. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk a little bit about antibiotics mm -hmm. because that people have been saying uh, antibiotics kill both the bad bacteria, which they're supposed to kill, but also the good bacteria that you need. So is that true? It is true. And as traditional medical doctors, we do an awful job of replacing it and just remembering to order probiotics. It's just right. not in our lexicon. Yeah. And, and, I, and I also, all of us go to the drugstore and buy things like Pepsid and Zantac. These are over-the-counter things to lower your, your uh, acidity so that you decrease reflux but hey guess what it's killing the ecosystem of the acidity just like we're chopping off trees and there's no trees for animals to live in mm -hmm. and I can speak to myself is that for many years I was wondering why I was the only one that had traveler's diarrhea like everybody goes out for dinner like I'm the only one sick mm -hmm. and now I know why because many years I took all these kinds of medications because yeah. I had heartburn and yeah. I've tested my gut flora and I have a lousy gut flora. It's like 30% diversity. So I think that's the reason why. I don't have enough good stuff to kill off the bad stuff when I'm traveling. See, diversity is important. That's right. <laughs> Look at us here. In real life, yes, in your gut, yes. you need diversity. Uh, let's talk about gut bacteria affecting your cravings. Like, do gut bacteria actually affect your cravings or is it a lack of willpower? What's happening there? So they actually do. So what you put into your mouth influences the composition of your gut flora. So if you okay. eat a lot of processed or sugary foods, you're going to have increased levels of the ones that that's the fuel source for. And if you eat a lot of complex vegetables and complex carbohydrates, these fiber fuel sources, yeah. then you're going to feed all the really helpful gut bacteria. Oh, and it's wow. a two-way street. So the gut bacteria actually send cascades of cravings up to your brain mm -hmm. for their preferred fuel source for their growth and development. Mm -hmm. So your cravings might actually not be your cravings, unless you include you as this collective of these guest bacteria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. How do you suspect if something is actually wrong? And I want to know how to test your gut health. How do you yeah. know you've got 30% diversity? Yeah. Like, so, how do I know that? Exactly. So the first part is, when I ask you all those questions, if you said yes to any of those, let's try yeah. to figure that out. So I'm right. going to speak for myself because I can't talk about patients. But I used to have this huge amount of burn. And I realized, thanks to her again, that we did the test. I'm actually allergic uh, to dairy. So since I removed oh. that, 
It's also helped my gut flora, probably because I'm not poisoning it with something it doesn't want, mm -hmm. right? So then there's um, over the, you can now online purchase these kits from just hundreds of dollars, and you really should figure out how to uh, diversify your flora and then take the right probiotics for you, because everybody has a different ecosystem in there. We gotta get the right ecosystem. So that's where a naturopathic doctor works. Okay, so you ship it out, you get your test, and then you figure out what's going on. Um, and then, Elizabeth, you gotta figure out what you need to do to get it healthy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. what do you need to do to get it healthy? Yeah. So the best thing you can do to get a healthy gut is eat fermented foods. So fermented. kimchi, Koreans yep. eat a lot of kimchi, Germans yep. eat sauerkraut, Japanese have natto, there's also yogurt and kefir. Mm -hmm. All of those are great sources of, of healthy bacteria for the gut. You can also have prebiotics, which are the fuel source for the probiotics, so it's what those critters eat, yeah. and that comes from these complex uh, carbohydrates, mostly green vegetables, garlic, onions, things like that. And lastly, you can supplement with a probiotic. And if you're to do that, I recommend a multi-strain probiotic, one that has a whole bunch of different strains, not just one or two. See, I've never had it explained to me like this before with the gut, so thank you very much for that. That was great, guys. You learn a little something-something from that? <laughs> okay.